Good morning. This is John Lynch of Lynch Solicitors. Another COVID-19 podcast or video in this case. I've just done a radio show on an area of law which is a little bit complicated and somewhat it's been subject to a new case that I was reading there, literally a month old. And it involves what is called nervous shock by legal practitioners. That's the heading that's used. But in fact, what it deals with is psychiatric injury or psychological injury, which is a recognized one that arises as a result of an accident. Now, the thing about psychiatric injuries is that they have a good long history in Irish law. Uh, they, they were reasonably well recognized in the 1800s, in fact, and were quiet for some time until the 1990s, when they again literally raised their heads and initially the Irish courts took the view that it was possible to pay compensation to someone who suffered from a psychiatric injury as a result of an act of negligence by a third party, meaning by someone else. The case that comes to mind is one that involves Limerick Junction, where you had an employee of the train company sitting in his office and a, a train literally came off the track and knocked the wall of the office and caused him emotional psychiatric distress as a result. Court had no difficulty finding that this was actionable, number one, and number two, that it was compensatable. Now, in the intervening years in both the UK and less so in Ireland, there's been a lot of discussion as to the limits within which you can make a claim for psychiatric illness as a result of an act of negligence by someone. Now, it throws up the whole issue of primary and secondary uh, victims of a particular incident. Now, if we just stick with the issue or stick with the fact scenario of an accident or let's say a road traffic accident, this is the most common one that arises and it can arise in a number of different ways and it has arisen in a number of different ways. So, for example, the easiest one is a family member who doesn't come upon the accident per se or possibly does come upon the accident, but may hear of the accident and on hearing the accident uh, because of the horrific nature of the accident and because of the consequences that flows from the accident, they suffer a psychiatric, recognisable psychiatric illness because of it. Now, what the court kind of grapples with here is the limit of liability. Do you allow anyone who suffers a psychiatric reaction to ground a claim or, or get compensation? The, the problem here is one that's been faced by the courts reasonably frequently, and that is the whole issue of kind of public policy or opening the floodgates of litigation, which is another way of putting it. So in other words, the courts see it as their responsibility not to open out a broad new area of compensation, even though the court might be satisfied that this new area of claims might fall within the definition of an act of negligence. It's an interesting one uh, and may be very relevant going forward when we come out of this COVID-19 scenario where you may look in retrospect at factual situations and say that there should be compensation payable because of negligence. It, an example of it actually, I think, which is already surfacing is a claim by a group action in involving an Austrian ski resort where the argument is that they should have taken a quicker action in order to deal with the pandemic. But anyway, back to the nervous shock scenario. And this is just to, to wrap it up to a certain extent. What the Irish courts seem to be saying is that if there are certain kind of basic elements present that they will award or make an award for psychiatric illness only as an as a standalone claim and the the requirements are and this is putting it in very much in a paraphrased way that there must be a recognizable psychiatric illness firstly secondly that must have arisen as a result of or caused by the shock of the circumstances that gave rise to the accident. Thirdly, that the 
the claimant has some sort of proximity to the circumstances of the accident. So in other words, either in time or space, in other words, that they came upon the accident or that they received a call about the accident. So that appears to be the general kind of consensus of the legal cases that we've been dealing with to date. The, the issue that has kind of also surfaced is the whole issue of whether or not you can extend it to all secondary victims and whether the analysis of primary and secondary victims makes any sense at all. The general uh, view in Ireland appears to be, and certainly the view of uh, Professor McMahon, former Judge McMahon, is that it's a very artificial uh, concept and not one that he would certainly favour. And that again found favour in the recent judgment of the High Court. I'll just leave you with one little final point on this whole question, if you like. And that is that there's a little bit of a, a warning signal that is present in all uh, new litigation or potential expanding litigation. And that is the Glencar Explorations case, which effectively introduced a test by the Supreme Court in Ireland saying that even if all the factors of say that the there was a duty of care by the person, that they breached that duty of care, that that duty of care resulted in damage, damage which was reasonably foreseeable, and that the injury that resulted was caused by the accident. Even if all those elements are present, and in the case of psychiatric injury, let's say the whole issue of proximity is there, i.e. that you were close to the time of the accident or the aftermath of the accident, physically or otherwise, that in those circumstances, the Irish Supreme Court has said that there is a further test before you open the floodgates, and that is that it must be reasonable and just to pay compensation in the circumstances. Again, thank you very much for listening to me. We're Lynch Solicitors in Clonmel, County Tipperary. You can access us on our website at lynchsolicitors.ie. We're also on LinkedIn. We're also on Facebook. And uh, if you have any questions at all, feel happy to email us. You get all our email addresses on the website. We also, by the way, have a YouTube channel if you're so inclined. Again, thank you very much for listening and I'll see you again next week.